Hey everyone, welcome back to Inside the Cage, where we bring you the latest and exciting updates of UFC. First, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Dana White's shocking weight loss revelation. Recently, Dana White has been on quite a transformation journey. Despite his athletic background, he received a startling prognosis. Just 10 years to live. So, he took it seriously. Before this wake-up call, Dana had been struggling to stay in shape. However, everything changed when he met Gary Brecka, a so-called human biologist and mortality expert. Dana shared his incredible transformation on Instagram, posting side-by-side -side photos of himself. And guess what? The difference was hell-surprising, my friend. He showcased a chiseled physique with impressive muscle mass and low body fat. In his Instagram caption, Dana wrote, Left is March 17th, 2017. The right is September 18th, 2023. F nuts! He even tagged Brecca's Instagram account to give credit where it's due. However, Dana's journey to better health began when he became, in his own words, effing obsessed with finding out how long he had left to live. After a DNA test, he received the harrowing news that he had only 10.6 years left if he continued down his current path. Determined to make a change, he embraced a series of lifestyle modifications, focusing on his diet and exercise with guidance from Brecca. So I did everything he said to the letter, White said on the podcast. My legs were so F up 13 weeks ago, I couldn't tie my shoes. I couldn't bend over to tie my shoes because my legs were F up. I could barely walk some days. I feel like I'm 35 years old again. Swear to God, I feel like I'm 35 again. Now, there's a bit of a debate among scientists about the accuracy of these predictions, but one thing's for sure. Dana White took that health warning pretty seriously. UFC's hidden concerns about Duplessis versus Strickland. Chael Sonnen, never one to shy away from speaking his mind, has a strong opinion on the UFC's middleweight championship picture. According to him, giving Dracus Duplessis the first shot at Sean Strickland for the title isn't something the UFC can afford to do. In Sonnen's view, it seems like the UFC might not be too keen on having Duplessis challenge Strickland. While he argues that if Duplessis were to snatch the title away from Strickland, it could complicate things for the UFC. Also, Sonnen firmly believes that Duplessis holding the championship would throw a wrench in the works when it comes to scheduling the fight everyone's itching to see. Still Knox versus the last stylebender, Israel Adesanya. Duplessis could get the opportunity. He's just not going to be the one they want to give the opportunity. Two, Sonnen said on his YouTube channel, there's not anybody on the decision-making level of the UFC that's going to go, okay, Duplessis, we're going to allow you to compete with a guy who is willing to compete against a guy, Adesanya, in an opportunity that was supposed to be yours and you declined. That isn't how it works. During his talk, he also pointed out that there would be significant consequences if Dricus Duplessis were to win the fight. Not to mention, you would have a much bigger problem if Duplessis was to win, Sonnen added. A big middleweight fight right now is Duplessis versus Adesanya. If you were to put Duplessis against Sean Strickland and Duplessis wins, you're now going to have a hard time making Duplessis versus Adesanya. Getting Adesanya back to the belt in a fashion that doesn't go through Sean Strickland isn't going to be the ideal path. Certainly, Duplessis has been quite vocal about his plans, too. He's made it clear that if he manages to beat Strickland, he's willing to do the honorable thing. He's willing to give Adesanya a chance to challenge him, and he even mentioned the interesting idea of having the showdown in Africa. Conor McGregor's opinion about KSI versus Tommy Fury. Here, Conor McGregor isn't holding back when it comes to his next targets. Nowadays, he's eyeing KSI and Tommy Fury, and let's just say he doesn't exactly consider them tough competition. During his interview, he was briefing with Seconds Out, where he mentioned that he is highly interested in seeing the showdown between KSI and Fury. All in all, he also pointed out in a teasing manner. I'll have me on all of them, yes. But as is classic Conor McGregor style, he didn't exactly shower either of those fighters with praise. That's for sure. They're mixers to me, yeah. Side hustles, yeah. While Conor McGregor's got some interesting side hustles lined up. They're going head-to-head -head on Dazen's prime card, and they're not alone. Logan Paul and Dylan Dennis are also in the mix, and their rivalry has been heating up. Fans have been buzzing about the idea of McGregor facing off against social media sensation KSI in a boxing match. 
especially after McGregor directly called out KSI during Anthony Joshua's post-fight interview. But before that can happen, McGregor has a tough UFC challenge ahead. Michael Chandler, who's on his fight schedule at the end of the year. Without any doubt, it is the immediate battle on his horizon. Guys, if you're enjoying the video, we'd love your support. Just hit that subscribe button to motivate us to bring you more exciting content. Patty Pimblett's wild celebration gone wrong. Patty Pimblett had quite the moment during a Cage Warriors bout. Then, at the exact moment, his Rolex paid the price. While reacting passionately to the fight, he ended up bashing the side of the cage so hard that his watch fell apart. Oopsie! To give you some context, Pimblett received a lavish Everose Gold Rolex day date from none other than Drake. He gave him after his UFC win last July, while the worth of this gift was 50,000 pounds. However, it seems he was rocking a different timepiece that night. An 18K white gold Rolex Yachtmaster with an Oyster Flex bracelet, valued at around 25,000 pounds. In the video clip, Pimblet said, It'll fix like but at the end of the first round where he nearly had him finished, I jumped up and started banging on the side of the cage. And I just went, what's happened there? The clasp was up my sleeve and the effing watch was off. Now, if we talk about his return to UFC, Paddy Pimblett's timing for the UK event couldn't have been better. It's just a few days after the big news dropped about his UFC comeback. Shortly, he's set to face Tony Ferguson in a UFC 296 showdown scheduled for December 16th. It's like a double treat for his fans, right? Joe Rogan reveals UFC rule update. Last but not least, Joe Rogan is stirring up some buzz in the MMA world. On a recent episode of The Joe Rogan Experience, the UFC commentator dived into the topic of the infamous 12, six elbow rule with Eddie Bravo. In this episode, Rogan dropped a bombshell by revealing he had a chat with Jeff Nowitzki, the senior vice president of athlete health and performance at the UFC. According to Rogan, Nowitzki hinted that the days of the 12, six elbow rule might be numbered. It could soon be history in the world of MMA. Rogan mentioned during his chat, 12 six elbows are illegal still, which is the dumbest thing in the world. In the mount position, you can't go 12 six, which doesn't make any sense. So if you and I are standing and you rush at me and hit me with a 12 six elbow, that's illegal. They're gonna change that. Novitsky talked to me about it. He said, I know this is something you complain about all the time and we think we're gonna be able to get rid of that. I'm like, oh, thank God. So. If we talk about the 12-6 elbow rule, you know, it's an elbow strike that comes straight down, usually from a mount position in a fight. Now, it gets its name from the clock. You know, like the 12 is up top and the 6 is down below. Now, here is where it gets interesting. The 12-6 elbow rule is a pretty big deal in MMA, and it's the reason why John Jones, the MMA superstar, has a loss on his pro record. Back in December 2009, Jones faced off against Matt Hamill. In the heat of the fight, from that mount position, Jones threw some 12-6 elbows and it got him disqualified. On the other side, Hamill walked away with the win via DQ. Overall, it is a moment that is etched in MMA history for sure. All right, guys, that's all for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. See you at the next one. Until then, goodbye.